So when I asked him, my husband was just like, doesn't really matter. He wants Yeti gear. Bingo. We're good. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Next. My Ricky said, something cool. Classic. Jump zone trampoline. Oh. Next. My dad just said, ask your mother. Magellan Outdoors fishing shirt. Cool. Oh. Wait, was he looking away when he said that? Yeah. Who wants the jeans too? <laughs> Enjoy. Next. Get the season's hottest deals before it's too late. This Black Friday, Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's not what champions do, it's what champions don't do. They don't back down, they don't settle, and they don't quit. Except for Cable. Cable. Yeah, you quit Cable. Because we are Cougars, and we don't quit. Unless what? Unless it's Cable! Quit Cable and switch to DirecTV and get the most live sports in 4K. More for your thing. That's our thing. 1-800-DIRECTV. Introducing Le'Veon Links of Love, only at Jared. Visit jared.com for $100 off any Le'Veon purchase. I am an Instagram boyfriend. Wing murals, candids, staged candids. I get them all. But now that rolled chicken tacos are back at Taco Bell, oh, my, look. my hands are tied. Sunset heart hands. Babe, sunset heart hands. Mm. Sunset heart hands. Let's just enjoy this moment. Take the picture. So easy to dip, so hard to put down. Rolled chicken tacos are back with your choice of dips only at Taco Bell. Here we go. Born in the Rockies. Coors Light is colder, cleaner, and crisper. To refresh you for what's next. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. SEC on ESPN on this beautiful night in Oxford, Mississippi. College football on Saturday, 8 Eastern on ABC, number three, Notre Dame. Will that be the final step toward the college football playoff in the Coliseum against USC? You can watch on the app. It'll stream live there, ABC, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Saturday. So when Notre Dame's complete, huh? I mean, that performance last yeah. week, that was something else. I think that performance alone almost locked it up if they take care of business this weekend. A little pitch play on first down for Ole Miss. Second time they've had the ball. There's number 94, one of the stars of this Mississippi State defense. We have a lot of guys who project to be high draft picks in the NFL, and he is among the highest of the projections. Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, he's a star. I mean, he, he is so good on the interior. He's so disruptive. And for his size, I mean, being 300 pounds, he's so well put together. He moves so effortlessly. He's a factor in special teams. He's blocked a number of kicks over the course of his career. And he is really, really disruptive. And it's a guy that we'll keep an eye on throughout this game, working against the backup center. Second down. After the nice gain on first down, a little play fake, and the ball knocked away, incomplete. Knocked down. I think it was Simmons who got his hands up and deflected that pass. Yeah, he's celebrating <laughs> like it was. Yeah, it was. And you see him just beat the offensive lineman inside, throw his hands up. He's just unblocked. That's a guy you need to account for. Number 94. He just busts right through and gets the pass breakup. And does the land shark down? How about it? We will see a lot more of that, I would guess, throughout the course of this Egg Bowl. Third and three. Mississippi State showing some pressure. And maybe bring a little bit of it. Tomu across the middle, and it's knocked away incomplete. Trying to hit his tight end, knocks again. Jonathan Abram, who's been in the middle of everything these last few weeks for the Bulldogs, was there on defense. Trying to work Knox, who had really good coverage on him by Abram. Little in breaking route, trying to body up the big tight end. I thought he had a receiver underneath in space where he could kind of run and pick up that first down. Bit of a force right there by Jordan to Amu in tight coverage. 
So Malik Deer once again back to receive. Mississippi State hoping for a little better field position this time, forcing another Mac Brown punt. He took a long time to get that one off. The pressure ended up coming, and that one out of bounds. It's going to be great field position. And look how far forward they are going to mark that ball into Ole Miss territory all the way down to the 42. There is a penalty flag. If it stands, that's a 17 yard punt. Matt Luke, the head coach, who's been a part of this rivalry since the time he was a little kid. Illegal equipment, receiving team. Two number nines on the receiving team. Wow. Five yard penalty. Results on the first down. How about that? Would have been a 17 yard punt. Great field position for the Mississippi State offense. And they had two players with the same number on the field Deer to return and Montez Sweat, the All American defensive lineman. And that's what gives Ole Miss the first down. Yeah, you can see the nines. I mean, right there, there's one, there's two. Clear as day. Who's in charge of making sure that doesn't happen? Aaron punt safe. You got to have that sorted out long before you take the field on on Thursday. Tamu keeps it and the ball comes out. And look who's there to grab it out of the air. The Mississippi State defense. It's Willie Gay Jr. And here comes a penalty flag with some celebration after the turnover. So even when the Bulldogs come up with a big play again, they make a mistake, but they're going to have the football. This just poor handle. By Ta'amu, you see that ball swing out just a little bit, and as a result, Jeffrey Simmons, it looks like, just taps it with his right hand. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number six of the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down Mississippi State. That is number six's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Now, Tamu also looking down at that right hand, and they're looking at it on the bench. The penalty against Mississippi State, but they will have the football while we have a moment. Let's go down to Laura. Yeah, the second that Jordan Tamu came off the field, guys, he immediately went straight to the bench and the athletic trainers and was shaking that right hand. They're looking at it, trying to move the fingers right now. I'll let you know the second that we know more. Wow. And you see as he's going to the ground, lands a little awkwardly. Then you saw him just kind of reach up instinctively and try to punch the ball out himself. See him grab that right hand. And of course, that being his throwing hand, it's going to be something to monitor as the game moves forward. And it is interesting, the disastrous special teams penalty, a little swing pass out to the tailback. That is Hill with the catch and run, and that's going to be a first down. Nice play for the Bulldogs offense. But after that special teams penalty, which gave Ole Miss the ball, and a first down. The turnover means the Bulldogs start almost at exactly the same spot that they would have. And you see Matt Corral, the backup for Ole Miss, throwing and trying to get warmed up. Be interesting to monitor who comes out for quarterback for the Rebels in their next possession. But a nice drive start right there. Getting the ball in the perimeter. Get Nick Fitzgerald's arm involved in the game on first and ten. Getting close to scoring position here. With no score, 7.30 still to go in the first quarter of the Egg Bowl. On Thanksgiving night from Oxford, Mississippi, Fitzgerald on first down is going to run. And he slipped on this turf. He saw a nice hole, but fell down and gained just a yard. So they are still looking at Jordan Tahamu. And I will we'll look at it again and see if we can see the exact moment. Goes down, that right hand kind of hits the turf, but as he's trying to make the tackle, he kind of pokes at the football. So nothing really looked egregious right there. Didn't. That was interesting. Did not. Hope he's okay. So essentially no gain on that run by Fitzgerald. It's second and ten. Play fake. Gets it out to Hill, but had too much on it. Hill couldn't handle it incomplete. This is not... A situation where Mississippi State has traditionally excelled. Third and long, obvious passing situation for Nick Fitzgerald. He's not the most accurate guy. He has struggled in this down and distance for the better part of his career. And you saw a glimpse of their head coach experiencing the Egg Bowl for the first time, Joe Moorhead. Let's see if he works a curl route, maybe right here to his wide receiver Gidry. That's been a successful play for him over the course of the last few weeks. On third and ten, Fitzgerald 
He'll throw on the other side, and uh, that one was caught by Dedrick Thomas. That's good enough for a first down. It's a beautiful throw by Nick Fitzgerald. Working to his left. Absorbs the hit by Sonogo. He throws the outbreaker in a perfect spot. That's a beautiful throw by the senior quarterback. So it's first down, Fitzgerald, good play fake. Took a pretty good hit as he gets down to the 15. Pops right up, so the quarterback, Damu. Yeah, that would be a good sign, I would think, Greg. Absolutely, and I just looked at the rotation on that ball. It looked like it came out of his hands just fine. He didn't really grimace either after he released it, so hopefully everything's going to be okay as he was working through what appears to be a right-hand injury. Well, we're talking about a guy who's thrown for more yards than all but one other quarterback this year in college football. It's a huge story if he's hurt and can't continue. Hill inside the 10 gets right near that first down mark, and with the extra push, he got it. It's going to be first and goal, Mississippi State. Man, it's good to see Kylan Hill back out there on the field. After having missed a few of the last couple weeks, getting injured against LSU, he's been their home run hitter this year. Harris Williams has done a great job filling in in his absence, but Kylan Hill is that explosive playmaker that Mississippi State has gone to time and time again this season. He is a big time talent. You mentioned Harris Williams. Yeah, that's an established senior experience tailback that he basically beat out. That's how good the sophomore is. And he has not been healthy until tonight. Fitzgerald gave it to Hill, took a big hit. Hill doesn't care. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Just a great read by Nick Fitzgerald. The zone read concept, he's reading Shepard on the end of the line of scrimmage. Shepard runs right at him, which is obviously a give read. On <laughs> the zone read principle, he hands it to Hill, and he bulldozes his way into the end zone. Nice answer on the turnover forced by their defense. So the former quarterback says that makes the read pretty easy. That's pretty simple. If, <laughs> if you're getting tackled, give it to the running back. <laughs> well, we'll see if Tom, who's going to be good to go. Ole Miss figures they're going to need to put some points on the board tonight because the Bulldogs have the first touchdown of this Egg Bowl. Wind intervened and helped the Rebels win 24-23. That was 1983. Part of the history of this in-state rivalry. First touchdown of this one on the board for Mississippi State. And the kickoff angled, returnable, but not for too much distance. Woolard outside the 20. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Well, Dave, I'm told that Jordan Tamu, the Ole Miss quarterback, is probable to re-enter this game. It is a right-hand injury and seems to be specifically the pinky finger. They've taped it up. He was throwing on the sideline, but as we've seen this offense for Ole Miss, they want to throw the ball a lot. You wonder how this affects him. Matt Corral is heading out onto the field right now, and they actually were just practicing snapping the football to Corral, trying to make sure he's comfortable there. Uh, good stuff, Laura, and uh, it is Corral at the moment on the field. That While you were talking, Laura, we saw a shot, and I think you could see that pinky finger. It was a great shot there where it was pinched up against the defender's arm, and it got bent in a funny way. So we'll see how long Corral is in this game. He throws a jump ball and get it to number five. That's usually a good plan. Demarcus Lodge with the catch. Welcome to the Egg Bowl, freshman. Well done. Matt Corral, a little back shoulder, underthrown deep ball. He was a big recruit, originally committed to Florida, finds his way to Oxford. It was a nice job holding up DeMarcus Lodge. A good job by the receiver making a play for him. Not a lot of Californians on these rosters, but Matt is from Ventura, Long Beach Poly kid. And completed a pass for 26 yards. Now gets away from one would-be tackler and takes a big hit, pops right back up. Talking to the people around this program, they say, okay, who's he like? What's his personality like, Matt Corral? They say, well, it's just like Chad Kelly's. Really got a lot of swagger. Very physical, very competitive. He really loves to play the game. It's going to be fun to watch him operate, maybe. Just a few extra reps. 
into Mississippi State territory second and four and good run defense from the Bulldogs there Scotty Phillips in for this series for the first time got stuffed by Errol Thompson and company I know you like that linebacker for the Bulldogs yeah, Errol Thompson's a great player we'll definitely be talking an awful lot about him extremely physical in the middle of the field but I know it's a sight for sore eyes too on the other side the receiving end of that hit from Errol Thompson with Scotty Phillips he's been out the last couple games with an ankle injury it's been a big reason why this offense has become a little bit more balanced over the course of this season. A third and four. And a pitch play to Phillips. Phillips trying to get to that corner, could not do it. What a nice play by the defensive back, Cameron Dantzler. It's fourth down. So it's in that part of the field where it's not just a guarantee that Ole Miss punts the ball away, but I think that's what they're going to do. It's a great tackle in the open field by Cameron Dantzler. You see Matt Luke, true to his history, going and visiting with Alex Givens, his right tackle, trying to figure out what happened. Not often you see the head coach grab the offensive lineman, usually grabs the quarterback. That's what happens when your head coach is a former offensive lineman. <laughs> That's Matt Luke's background. Another punt that took a while to get off. Mississippi State has pressured the punts in this first quarter. We'll see if that pays off later in this Egg Bowl. Bulldogs have the ball back, leading 7 0. Ohio State kind of limping into that game, and Michigan looking as good as anybody. But don't sleep on Oklahoma, West Virginia tomorrow night. That's going to be an unbelievable matchup. Two offenses that can really really move the football down the field projected total in that game 84 points that's that's the baseline <laughs> Harris Williams gets the carry on first down for a nice game for the Bulldogs offense meanwhile they're playing catch still this was just a moment ago on the sidelines for Ole Miss that's Matt Corral the backup true freshman quarterback and now he's having a problem with his throwing hand, just like the starter Tamu. On second down, Williams bounces it to the outside with a lot of room in front. Nice cut up field. Out close to the 40 yard line. Let's go down to Laura. Well, David did look like Ole Miss's backup quarterback, Matt Corral, had jammed his thumb there. He's now okay, so maybe it just scared him a little bit, but he did catch a few more passes after that. So uh, he is uh, fully recovered and ready to go if he's going to go back in. But once again, Jordan Tamu probable to return. We could see him next drive for Ole Miss. There's 100 guys on the sideline. Why are you catching passes? <laughs> it's a little cold. It's brisk. The backup quarterback doesn't need to be catching passes. Have someone catch it for you. I think that's a good piece of advice. <laughs> Fitzgerald and the Mississippi State offense on first down. Again, Williams with a lot of room into Ole Miss territory. Another first down for the Bulldogs. It's a beautiful move at the second level. You can see him in Miles Hartsfield right there. And Williams puts that left foot in the ground. Shimmy's inside, and there he goes. I'm telling you, he's a very underrated back. So productive last year. Kylan Hill has a little bit more explosive ability. So three plays on this drive. Nine-yard run, 16-yard run, 13-yard run. How many yards is this run going to be? Eh, make it 12 on first down. Ole Miss is going to need to find an answer for this rushing attack. So far, as you can see, Wesley McGriff, the defensive coordinator, haven't been able to do much. Mississippi State has run the ball on 13 of their 17 snaps and is averaging almost eight yards a carry. True to form, already over 100 for the first quarter. Kylan Hill checks in, that sophomore who punched it into the end zone on the last drive. Williams goes to the sideline. Fitzgerald designed quarterback run, and Fitzgerald out into the open. Dragging that defensive player with him inside the 20 down to the 18. They found a play here that they really like just based on formation. That's the second time now that they've called Fitzgerald's number on this quarterback power to the right hand side. Last time he burst it for a big one. This time he does so again. They clearly like something with their numbers against the way Ole Miss is aligning to that formation. My guess is. 
in the second quarter. We're going to see more of that from Mississippi State because it is working here in this 2018 Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night in Oxford, Mississippi. The Bulldogs swinging for the fences with a 7 nothing lead. Bang, this is the game for you. Kyler Murray, obviously a Heisman Trophy contender, and Will Greer, the senior, former Florida quarterback, blossomed into a star in Morgantown. Before the first play of the second quarter with Mississippi State leading 7-0, I believe that's an Ole Miss penalty. Is that big Benito Jones? Outside. Defense number 95. Five-yard penalty. First down. Benito Jones has been one of the few bright spots on this defense and he's so quick and active coming off the football. Sometimes he gets a little bit ahead of himself right there. They use the snap count against him and he gets a bit of a head start. So it's first and five Fitzgerald with Kylan Hill alongside will keep it. Fitzgerald trying to get away inside the 10 down to about the eight. Bulldogs keeping the ball on the ground to great effect on this drive a nine yard run a 16 yard run 13 11 and 20 they've gotten four first downs looking for a fifth on second and one now you can expect them to continue to keep it on the ground in this part of the field when they get down here in the red zone their run percentages go up significantly especially if the defense doesn't have an answer for it typically makes them a very good red zone team Kylan Hill trying to lunge forward and I think he well, he got close. He did not quite get there. About a half a yard short. It's third and a half of a yard. Is that Sonogo on the turf hurting? Looks like Josiah Coatney. Yeah, that's exactly who it is. Yeah. That big defensive tackle. Another one of their best players. So they can't afford to lose him. They'll take a look. Hopefully he's all right. We'll be back right after this. Fleming, Greg McElroy, Laura Rutledge, 7 0. The uh, Bulldogs with the lead over the Rebels. Our Thursday night college football presented by David Busters. Third down and a yard, even less than that for Mississippi State and Nick Fitzgerald early in the second quarter. First down and a touchdown for Fitzgerald. And you know how much that moment and every positive moment that he has in this game will mean to him. This was a nice decision by him. He looks out to his left, doesn't like Kylan Hill on the little wide route. So he says, hey, what better guy than me to take it myself, call my own number, get north and south vertical, and find pay dirt. So the extra point coming Fitzgerald already has 62 rush yards and now an egg bowl touchdown. It is 14 nothing Mississippi State. Well glad you're with us here on this uh, Thanksgiving night and uh, Greg I, it's it is no surprise what we're seeing from the Bulldogs offense. They want to run the ball tonight and they want to run the ball with their quarterback. You know that this game means so much to him after what we witnessed last year in Starkville. Yeah, injured early in the game, taken out, a full offseason of rehab, a full offseason of frustration, now having an opportunity to prove himself yet again. And he's really done a great job making good decisions with the football. They haven't had to throw it much. They've obviously leaned heavily on not just his legs, but Kylan Hill and Eris Williams' legs. But he's kept his emotions in check, has been efficient, it hasn't been a little bit too high with the high and low with the lows, which he had a tendency to do at times throughout the course of his career. Well, I think you do make a good point about, I mean, Ole Miss is capable of being a come from behind team. They have an explosive offense, a lot of weapons. Mississippi State is a great front running team, and they're keeping the ball on the ground. You figure that will continue when they have a lead. They love to play powerful football. Tamu. Had his helmet on, so we may well see him come back on the field after missing a series. That one in the end zone will be a touchback. And our drive recap brought to you by Enterprise. Keep it on the ground. Good formula for the Bulldogs. And that's been their formula and bread and butter all year. Here it is, Harris Williams. A nice little shimmy to avoid the tackler at the second level. There he goes yet again out the right hand side. Then Nick Fitzgerald gets involved with a quarterback power along the right hand side. He makes a great decision on what was a called pass play to his running back on the wide route. 
He doesn't like it. He decides to burst forward with his legs and picks up the touchdown. You can see what Mississippi State's all about just by watching those eight plays on that drive. Never threw the ball to Amu, throws the ball back in. That's a great sign for Ole Miss. And he hits the freshman Elijah Moore for a first down. Let's go down to Laura. Dave, we have told you about the right hand injury for Jordan Tamu. That pinky is taped. But another thing to keep in mind, his left foot is also injured. He's dealing with a left foot sprain. So quarterback runs were going to be limited in this game anyway. Even more important that he's able to throw the ball. And it is a good point. It is their final game, of course. They are not going to a bowl game. No matter whether they win this game, they're five and six. They would get their six win, but this is the second year of their two year postseason ban, part of their NCAA sanction. So this is, in essence, their bowl game. They've treated it like a bowl game all week long, done some special stuff, some charitable stuff, had like a player's uh, hospitality area in their locker room area. This is it for Ole Miss. They're going to pitch it back to Elijah Moore. Trying to get to that corner. There's the speed of the Mississippi State defense. And Jonathan Abram once again. Jonathan Abram over the last few weeks has just elevated his play to a whole new level. We always loved him because of his versatility. He could play safety or he could play kind of that, that nickel linebacker right there showing off the sideline to sideline speed. On third and nine, A.J. Brown gets a touch. He hadn't had one in a long while. Kind of goes down awkwardly there with the tackle. I think he's okay. Jamal Peters well short of a first down. And probably another punt coming. Good thing that A.J. Brown was able to get up. That didn't look pretty. Just kind of rolled backwards a little awkwardly. And A.J. Brown so tough and physical at wide receiver. Also very flexible though too. I mean he's just a tremendous athlete right there. No that, issues for him as he goes to the ground. Yeah that catch sets a new single season Ole Miss record 83 catches this year. Almost 1300 yards another pressured punt. Fair catch at around the 25 Mississippi State gets the ball back. 14 nothing Bulldogs. You think they'll be handing the ball off when we come back? I would imagine a heavy dose of run. 1,045 30 all miss with the win. They like to say the Deuce got loose. Deuce McAllister, one of the all time greats in all miss football history, had a huge egg bowl that year. Fun to watch those highlights of him. I got some guys on this current Ole Miss team. A.J. Brown comes to mind most prominently, who are among the all time greats themselves. But right now, Ole Miss for looking for something positive. Mississippi State with a two touchdown lead, getting the ball back. They run for three yards on first down. And that's a good start. They have to be more stout at the line of scrimmage. We saw Josiah Coatney go down just a series ago, but he's back out there on the field. Fortunately, a defensive tackle, as is Benito Jones. Those two guys really need to emphasize the penetration in the front in order to slow down this Bulldog rushing attack. I mean, you said it early in our telecast tonight, and I, I think it's true. And this isn't piling on these Ole Miss players. Williams, that was a good play by Benito Jones. Just a gain of a couple of yards. It'll be third down. They have some individual talent on defense. The numbers do not really back that up. Their statistical numbers on defense are ugly. But they have some talented individuals. They do. They have a lot of talented guys. It's just for whatever reason, when you watch them, they're unsound. Sometimes they're not lined up properly. They've struggled tackling week in, week out. It's, it's been a frustrating watch this year sometimes when you turn on the Landshark defense. So it's third and five. Fitzgerald on the move, looking to throw, pressured, and just has to throw it away. So that's a good possession for the Ole Miss defense. And big number 95 was in the middle of everything. That was a great job by Benito Jones getting on the perimeter and forcing the throw but you have to credit the secondary a secondary that has experienced quite a few up and downs throughout the course of the season right there that was a covered sack there was nobody open downfield and Benito Jones is able to break free and force Nick Fitzgerald to throw the ball away. Tucker Day the punter Elijah Moore can be pretty dynamic back there as the punt return man. Well, he signals fair catch so there won't be a return here a pretty good field position for this Ole Miss offense trying to rev it up with all those playmakers against a very tough defense when we come back. See South Titans and the Texans meanwhile here the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night 
Ole Miss offense, here we are, five minutes into the second quarter with no points on the board. They're not used to that. A nice start to this drive. All the way out close to midfield, already beginning with their best starting field position. It gets a lot better after the very first play. You, know, you see the numbers the first four times they had the ball. Punt, fumble, punt, punt. And the longest drive was six plays, 19 yards. Just haven't been able to manufacture much. Haven't really thrown it with great efficiency. Haven't been able to run the football. Got to find something on this drive, though. Get that offensive rhythm. That's one thing that typically this year, for all that hasn't gone right, has not been a big problem. That was a dart from Damu to Demarcus Lodge. First down well into Mississippi State territory. Demarcus Lodge just doesn't get enough love. I mean, this guy makes play after play, and especially the last couple weeks, he started to emerge. You now, A.J. Brown's the star, and he's the go-to guy, but don't sleep on five. Pressure comes. Damu throws into coverage incomplete. Trying to get it to A.J. Brown. I thought last week at Vanderbilt, Demarcus Lodge had one of the all-time tough guy performances that I could remember. I mean, there were times where it looked like he couldn't walk. Yeah. And he was back on the field making play after play. And he stepped up. When D.K. Metcalf went down, that was a huge loss. Obviously, opposite A.J. Brown. Lodge has been thrust into the lineup on the outside. Always played a bunch, but now playing in a different role and has really responded to the challenge. It's been fun to watch for the senior. So now to Amu and a timeout. Yes, no, a Mississippi State player went down to the ground with some sort of cramp or something. And he's barking at somebody on the bench. That's Jamal Peters. So they'll take a look at Peters. And we will step aside just briefly back to see if your team made this week's rankings and to see how your school can compete even on Thanksgiving break. Lots of the students are here tonight in Oxford, Mississippi State with the two touchdown lead. Jamal Peters on the sideline after going down was something was going on with his either his knee, his knee brace, or something. Second and ten for Ole Miss. Tamu, who missed a series himself with a finger injury. Back on the field here. This is the deepest down the field that Ole Miss has gotten. That was, I guess, supposed to be a quarterback run. It did not work. And tried to go with a little quarterback draw. You Chauncey, see Chauncey Rivers? Rivers. Yeah, Chauncey Rivers just slides inside. And a little stunt up front makes the play. Yeah, they play a lot of guys on the defensive line, don't they? Yeah, it's definitely not a two-man show. They're much deeper than just Jeffrey Simmons and Montez Sweat. It's a really good group collectively, and they can go two, even three deep in spots. Keeps everybody fresh. One of the reasons why Mississippi State statistically is arguably the best defense in the country. That one, A.J. Brown came back to get the ball, and then he slipped. Well, he was thinking first down and much more, and he slipped on the turf. It's fourth down. It's a little corner cat, and A.J. Brown does a great job of coming back to the football, finding that space in the defense, coming back, and unfortunately can't keep his feet as he's trying to pick it up on the third and long. But it looks like Ole Miss is going to leave their offense on the field and go for it here in fourth and manageable. Why not? It's the Egg Bowl. It's your last game of the year. Be aggressive. I know which direction I'd be looking, though. That's in the direction of number one. A.J. Brown at the bottom of the screen on fourth and four. Play clock was winding down. Ta'amu instead goes to the tight end with a great catch. That was good coverage, but Dawson Knox hangs on first down Ole Miss. It's a great throw by Ta'amu. Look at where he puts this football on the left shoulder of Dawson Knox. He sees that collapse by C.J. Morgan, who's covering Knox, and he throws it away from the defender. Uncoverable if you throw it with that type of accuracy. That's a good point. If he put that right on the number nine, might not have been a completion. He gets it right back to number nine for a short gain on first down. And this is a critical drive for Ole Miss. Their defense has had a tough time, but they rewarded them on the last opportunity, three and out their offense good field position they absolutely have to cash this drive in with at least three but obviously they're hoping for six and they're using a tight end as a wildcat quarterback here to Amu out and Pellerin's going to run the ball Mississippi State saw that coming 
Yeah, Pellerin goes in for one reason and one reason only to run the football and more often than not to run the football between the tackles. He was a quarterback at one time but when Shea Patterson beat him out they moved into tight end. He's one of their better athletes just unable to get much going because he just doesn't have a lot of versatility to his game. So it's third and five. Big play here on both sides with Ole Miss down by two touchdowns. Still seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Watch all the pressure. Pressure comes. Damu gets rid of it. Intended for the tight end incomplete. Jonathan Abram has been everywhere in this first half. He had the coverage. And now they're not going to go for it. They're going to line up and try a field goal. Yeah, correct decision here. Uh, you have to turn this drive into points. I know it's not the amount of points they were hoping for, but you cannot walk away empty handed after your defense gets you the ball with the starting field position they did. From this distance, Luke Logan's been very good. He's had a good year. He leads the SEC in scoring, and this one is up and good. His 22nd made field goal of the year. So Logan puts it through. Ole Miss on the board, 14-3 here in the second quarter of the Egg Bowl. Not long ago, Rhonda started here, and then more jobs began to appear. These techs in a lab, this builder in a hard hat, the welders and electricians who do all of that. The diner stacked up because they all needed lunch. Teachers, doctors, jobs grew a bunch. What started with one job spread all around because each job in energy creates many more in this town. Energy lives here. With Hulu, tailgating's never been better. Unlike the early days when all you had was a radio. But through the years, the experience got better and better. And now, Hulu's completely changed the game. Because you don't have to choose between tailgating or watching football live on ESPN. You can do both, no cable required. Hulu makes it so easy, the game will never be the same. From the Coliseum on Saturday, 8 Eastern on ABC, number three, Notre Dame against the Trojans of USC. Watch it live on the ESPN app if you're on the go on Thanksgiving weekend. Notre Dame, their final game, of course, they won't play in a conference championship. Their final chance to convince the committee, if they can win, that they should be in Jamal Peters. Right in that exercise bike, he was the, the guy who went down and stopped play late in that drive for Ole Miss that turns into three points. Matt Luke, the head coach, talking to his quarterback. Mississippi State will get the ball back here. Shorter kickoff and a return coming outside the 20, 25, and even a little bit more close to the 30. That's where the Bulldogs will take the ball. For more on the defensive back, Peters, let's go down to Laura. Dave, as you mentioned, Peter's on the bike now. He's been on the bike ever since he came out of the game. I'm told by the Mississippi State Athletic Training Staff that he re-aggravated an old injury, that left knee, but he is probable to get back in this game. You can see the brace on there pretty clear, but kind of looking at him, he was kind of standing around and looking to the sideline, decided to go down pretty abruptly. It didn't look like anything that was significant, but kind of unusual timing the way he went down. I mean, we do get very cynical about the, that stuff. I think there are instances where players on a, a high tempo offense is going, go down to the turf to stop that tempo. Fitzgerald, quarterback run on first down. He got hit pretty hard. And players do use that. I mean, they go down if a team's running tempo. The only thing is Ole Miss wasn't running tempo. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of unusual, the timing of, of when Peters went down. So... Certainly something to monitor, and, and he's an important piece of that secondary. They're noticeably better when he's on the field. Yeah. I mean, it makes me think that was legit as opposed to just going down. He was feeling something, couldn't get to the sideline, so I'm not ready for this next play. I better go down. Anyway, it's second and eight, Mississippi State. And in motion, a fake on that fly sweep kind of action. Ole Miss's defense was ready. Kadir Shepard, number 97. He's had a good year, the junior. A little undersized, but he's a playmaker. Yeah, the transfer, and he has. He's done a nice job. And if you watched Ole Miss on defense the last couple drives, 
they're not respecting the pass at all. Their safeties are extremely tight, close to the box, not threatened whatsoever by Nick Sherrill throwing it down the field. Looks isn't like they're going to be tight again. Isn't that how you would play them? That's exactly how I would play them. You see right here, there's going to be pressure off the left side. Unless they drop out. There they go. So just a four-man rush. They still pressure Fitzgerald. That ball came out. Now the arm might have been going forward. In the end, it, it won't matter much because Mississippi State was there to recover. Coatney Fitzgerald. That ball came out. Now the arm might have been going forward. In the end, it, it won't matter much because Mississippi State was there to recover. Coatney, who came back in the game, I think he's the guy who got the hand up and knocked the ball away. That was a really nice disguise by Ole Miss's defense. I mean, their safeties were very tight. The last few drives, they've been even tighter than what they showed. Looks like blitz. You're thinking blitz. As a result, you have your blitz beaters called. Next thing you know, Ole Miss defense drops out, and their defensive line gets home. That was a nice job by Weston McGriff, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss. What'd you think? I think that was actually a fumble. I, I do. I thought it was. Yeah, I think it was definitely a fumble. It recovered by the Bulldogs nonetheless, but a good job by getting home of the defensive line. So the clock winding. That's back-to-back -back three and outs for the Ole Miss defense. That's a real positive for them. And a fair catch after the punt. Ole Miss gets the offense back on the field. Our college football awards spotlight is brought to you by the Home Depot. Two guys we've been talking about a lot in this first half of the Egg Bowl. Montez Sweat, Jeffrey Simmons having huge years for the Mississippi State defense. And two of the best in the business when it comes to affecting the quarterback. And they are certainly not the only ones on that side of the football. I mean, Errol Thompson, Jonathan Abram over the last few weeks have been off the charts. But these two guys, and they are as difficult to contain as anybody in the entire SEC. The Home Depot College Football Awards show December 7th, 7 p.m. right here on ESPN. First down run going backwards. The loss of at least two, maybe three. That was Gary Green leading the charge from his defensive end spot. And for Ole Miss this drive, I want to see offensive coordinator Phil Longo. I want to see him start to work the intermediate passing game. Mostly it's been all deep or all short. He can start working that intermediate zone, soften up these defenders. That's deep and incomplete. Nobody was there. Elijah Moore broke in. The ball went out. It's third and 12. So you can see Phil Longo. With that pink wristband that he wears in tribute to his daughters. He also says it's easier for the players to see the pink. I, I don't know. That one looks like it's been washed a couple times, a little faded, but he's done a pretty good job with this offense, consistently putting up production. Just wants them to know he's thinking about them at all times. Tom, who on the move, trying to signal to his receiver to get farther downfield, and he whistled it over the head of the intended target incomplete. It's fourth down. And I think that is a little disappointing for Ole Miss fans. Defense back-to-back -back stops, and yet the offense just has not really been able to get any rhythm going in this first half. Well, they got to start working the middle of the field. I think you're right. And they have to start working that intermediate passing. It can't be all or nothing. It's, it's got to be a little bit of in-between, and they haven't really tried to do that yet. Brown punting. This one a much better punt over the head of the return man still bouncing and uh, Mississippi State that was pretty dangerous Malik Deer pounced on it he wanted to save a few yards he did but it won't be good field position for the Bulldogs while we have a moment we will say happy Thanksgiving to one of our favorites a guy who's a lot to be thankful for at Nanberg. Well, that's very kind of you, Dave. Fleming, back at you, pal. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours as well. Coming up on the Mazda half from a poor plan to get to, including that Big 12 showdown, West Virginia, Oklahoma. Jesse Palmer will break down both those offenses and what the key is going to be in that game tomorrow night. Plus, can Notre Dame stay unbeaten and get into the college football playoff? One last test there as they'll be facing USC, and Michigan's redemption tour continues in Columbus. All that more coming up. And seriously, Dave, what's the best part of Thanksgiving? Got to be the stuffing, right? Settle a bet here. Huh, stuffing. Mm. Hey, that would not be my number one pick in no. the Thanksgiving draft. No, it would not. Sweet potatoes, maybe? It's a tough call, but I'm, I'm going sweet potatoes. 
I'm, I'm a strong, so I like for Thanksgiving something that you never have. Like it has to be a true only and unique to Thanksgiving. So we never have strawberry pretzel salad. It's a very Southern dish. No one knows what it is, but my goodness, it's good. I was not thinking that it's was going to be your number one it's pick. It's basically strawberry jam. It's cream cheese and pretzels. I mean, a little <laughs> sweet and salty is not much to it, but man, it's delicious. All right, after we're going to go get, we're going to get Laura's number one pick too. Laura, I don't know if you're listening to this. Yeah, I, it's strawberry pretzel salad. I mean, come on. But I, I would I would go <laughs> with stuffing, but it'd have to be my mom's. There's oh. sausage in there too. It's, oh. it's delicious. Nice. A fake pitch, Fitzgerald straight ahead and tackled. We'll see where they spot him. Very close. I think he did get the first down. So mom's stuffing. I mean, you're right. Sweet potatoes you have during the year, so it's yeah. not a totally it's not unique a Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving food. unique dish to me. I, mean, I still really like it though. Turkey's not unique to you. No, I had no. turkey all the time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I want something yeah. that I'm gonna have once a year. Mashed That's potatoes, it. not unique. No, I have it all the time. Brussels sprouts, green bean casserole. Now, if you go green bean casserole, we can have a conversation. Yeah, because usually you have green beans all year round. Yes, but green bean casserole. See, this is the stuff you get on <laughs> Thursday night that you don't get anywhere else. <laughs> Kylan Hill with the uh, two-yard run on first down. Well, we hope everybody who is watching us here tonight enjoyed their Thanksgiving feast, whatever your favorite may be. Now some college football on Thanksgiving night. Under two minutes to go, first half from the Egg Bowl. And for all of our uh, crew and folks who put college football on the air for you to enjoy on your holiday, we appreciate them giving up their Thanksgiving night at home to be here in Oxford. Of course, I always say, where else would you want to be? It's an SEC rivalry game under the lights. That's uh, a pretty good way to spend the holiday. There's Hill out into the open. Kylan Hill on the move to midfield and into Ole Miss territory. That is a very big play with just 120 on the clock here, nearing the end of the first half. A huge play. I mean, Mississippi State content with just going into the locker room, running the football. Now they break a big run. Now they're thinking points. I I'd think see them exactly get a little right. more aggressive here. They have three timeouts, plenty of time. In this part of the field, it, this might be where you start to get a little more aggressive with some of your offensive calls. So with all their timeouts, a minute 20, plenty of time on the clock, and they will throw the ball. Fitzgerald with a strong arm. He's not the most accurate quarterback. That was pretty accurate. And Stephen Gidry with a nice catch, another big game. He does throw this ball very well, the back shoulder. He doesn't have great touch, but when he drives the football, he has a tendency to be quite accurate. A nice job, too, by Gidry on the receiving end, going up, knowing where he's at on the field, getting a foot down in bounds on the back shoulder. 30-yard run, 25-yard pass. That's 55 yards in two plays for Mississippi State. With a minute 13 on the clock, Harris Williams back in, trying to bounce it outside, and some tough running just to get close to the line of scrimmage. And Mississippi State is going to use one of those three timeouts. So 102 on the clock, two timeouts remaining for Joe Moorhead, who is in his first year at the helm of this Bulldogs program, experiencing his first Egg Bowl. Been lots of stories in the local papers leading into this Egg Bowl from previous coaches for both Ole Miss and Mississippi State talking about their first experiences with this rivalry. Right. And almost every one of them said, well, the, the main takeaway is, if you've never been a part of it, is don't lose. <laughs> no doubt. This rivalry has certainly been one of the more hostile in college football for a hundred years but over the last few years it's ramped up even I mean with it everything has. that's gone on between the two programs the hostility is at an all-time high and I it, look, it is funny yeah. too to contrast the two coaches isn't it because Joe's right. got his first Egg Bowl experience Matt says well every year of my life I've experienced the Egg Bowl growing right. up as a kid you see him in the middle there he is there's Matt if you couldn't tell which one was him he's the one in the middle looks, <laughs> he looks the exact same uh, now here well into his 40s his brother had a big egg bowl moment as the quarterback for Ole Miss when he was still in middle school high school and then he played for Ole Miss has coached here for a long time now the head coach Fitzgerald swung one out to the left flat but a good open field tackle.
gain of about a half yard to Farad Green the tight end clock continues to roll. It's third down and long. Eighth play of the drive coming up here. Play fake pressure picked up. There's another one of those back shoulder type throws a lot of contact and two penalty flags thrown intended for Mitchell. This one's going against the defense. He loves the call. JV and Hamilton I think is the guy who's going to get penalized here. Pass interference. Defense number 21. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, pretty obvious call. I mean, a lot of contact as Osiris Mitchell tries to go back and make a play on the underthrown deep ball. They're going to call that every single time as, as Hamilton obviously engages the contact and doesn't really turn around to make a true effort to try to catch the football. And these officials are going to spot that and throw the flag every time. And now it's important to point out they got two timeouts. I mean, they can run the ball here even with only 30 seconds on the clock. I would bet they will. Well. No. Oh. Why run when you can do that? Touchdown, Mississippi State. Dedrick Thomas. How about that drive? Remember the 65 yard punt. They started all the way back at their eight yard line and looking initially like they were just going to be happy to wind the clock down. Yeah, they saw all out pressure and they just recognized one on one with Thomas working against Hartsfield. He breaks in and the quick slot receiver with a little too much quickness on the in breaking route results in the touchdown great play call great execution by this Mississippi State offense. What a drive for Nick Fitzgerald and company now that was remarkable. They do get the ball to start the second half so that could be a double hit for Ole Miss. Twenty one to three is the score on this Thanksgiving night in the Egg Bowl. Remember we told you about the things that Ole Miss did this week leading into this game I thought one of the, the, the most impactful did some community service work they had their players load it load up those grocery carts and they picked some families here in the area to donate some Thanksgiving meals to great job by the Ole Miss players and coaches yeah, that's special too and that's the things that you don't see every time people say there's too many bowl games well the bowl games are so important to the community because you get to do things like that in the week leading up. So a nice job by this Ole Miss staff trying to make it special for the young men and trying to simulate that bowl experience by getting involved in the community, giving back and interacting with their neighbors and loved ones. And that's what Ole Miss has done. They're not going to a bowl game this year, win or lose. So they treated this like their bowl week did some extra service with their community anyway job well done by Matt Luke and his group on the field though it's been mostly positive for Mississippi like you save a few seconds you got your timeouts you got the big play receivers at least give yourself a chance to take some shots down the field you can't do anything catastrophic though here so if you're going to throw it I mean, I'd still be a little surprised if they would just knowing where they are on the field wouldn't want to try to do too much especially knowing the pass rush that Mississippi State has on their side of the field. They can make a bad play worse in a hurry with Montez Sweat and Jeffrey Simmons and you were right they're going to hand the ball off so a run play just a few yards out to the 30 and nobody's going to call a timeout so that could well be the final play of this first half. And I think you hear some dissatisfaction from the fans in Oxford unhappy that that's the way that the half came to an end. It's the correct call though. I mean just you're down 18 regroup. Don't take a risk and potentially go down go to halftime down 25. So the halftime score Bulldogs dominated 21 to 3. They lead their rivals in the Egg Bowl and now on this Thanksgiving night Bullry series Nick Fitzgerald with a heck of a first half for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. He was really impressive. Hasn't been just on the ground either. It started with him carrying the football where he was very effective in the open field made a good decision here. This was actually a passing play instead he doesn't like it goes north and south. But as the half went on he started to open it up through the air and guided a beautiful 
90 plus yard drive at the end to give them a 18 point lead here heading into the second half. Our PlayStation player index, yeah, it wasn't all on the ground. He mixed it up. And I think for Mississippi State fans, they must feel really good about a kid who had a gruesome injury in this rivalry game last year down at Starkville. And Mississippi State, in a lot of ways, never recovered from that. Nobody was looking forward to this game more than Nick Fitzgerald, and he has come ready to play. Mississippi State and Fitzgerald will have the ball first to start this second half. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Dave, Joe Moorhead, Mississippi State's head coach, said that he's so proud of Nick Fitzgerald keeping his emotions in check so far in this game. He said he's emotional, but those emotions haven't affected him. And then on the Ole Miss side, talking to Coach Matt Luke, he said that Jordan Tamu did dislocate that pinky on his right hand. That's his throwing hand. They did tape it up as we documented, but he's still dealing with some pain there. He is expected to play in this second half. He told his team, Matt Luke did, that they have got to get a stop right here. This defense getting a stop right now to start the third quarter is the most essential thing, according to Coach Luke. A good stuff from Laura and the two head coaches, and I would agree with Matt Luke. Ole Miss is staring at a game that could get out of hand in a hurry. Kylan Hill, who had, I thought, one of the biggest plays of that first half. Uh, Mississippi State took the ball with a little under three minutes to go back at their own eight yard line. Not an offense you expect to have success through the air in big chunk. He had the big run that got him close to midfield and that opened things up and they went in and scored a touchdown. Yeah, They were very content to head to halftime with a double digit lead. When he broke that run they got more aggressive through the air. I thought that was a really big play in this game. It's 21 three Hill with another carry. Behind his big offensive line, a couple yards short to set up third down. These dudes have some size up front. Yeah, they're enormous, and they always have been. I mean, this is a staple of Mississippi State football for the last decade and change. You look across the front, 340 on the right hand side, 335, they bookend it. But Elton Jenkins at center is one of the best in the country when it comes to his position. Greg Island, the left tackle, he's a guy who kind of looks trim at 6'8", 335 <laughs> compared to his uh, fellow offensive lineman. Fitzgerald throwing the ball, and that one, an open field tackle for the stop well short of the first down. That's a big play for Ole Miss, and it's the safety Miles Hartsfield. A beautiful job by Miles Hartsfield in the open field making that tackle, but it was all made possible by the pressure that was felt up the middle by Nick Fitzgerald. You see number 17, Willie Hibbler, actually swim around the running back who was trying to block him, forced Fitzgerald to throw it a little quicker than he probably wanted to, and they couldn't get the first down. Nice job of the Ole Miss defense. Fourth punt for Tucker Day, and not a real good one. You see how the bounce ends up. It's going to work out pretty well for the Bulldogs. So all the way down to the 15-yard line, that's where the Ole Miss offense will have it first here in the second half tomorrow with your leftovers as part of the day. How about some college football UCF South Florida big game for UCF Oklahoma West Virginia college football primetime that one will start at 8 Eastern both games live on the ESPN app both right here on ESPN between those two games and the Monday night football game <laughs> there's going to be a lot of points scored on ESPN in a five day span. That is true. Those are two off two teams or two games that are going to feature high powered offense. Rams Chiefs kind of set the tone for the whole week we expect. Play fake Tom who pressured and he's going to get hit and go down. Wow quickly into the backfield. That's Gary Green. And Gary Green just working around the edge and it looked like Jeffrey Simmons was really working up the middle too as that pocket started to collapse. You can see Dawson Knox, number nine, the tight end. No match for the edge rusher in a one-on-one -on -one situation. I mean, Gary Green's like ninth on the list of defensive stars for Mississippi State. And that's no knock on him. That's just how deep they are. Tamu from the goal line gets hit and throws a pick. Jonathan Abram having a huge egg bowl. And he was thinking about trying to use a block and get to the end zone. No matter, Mississippi State will have the ball inside the red zone after the pick from Tamu. This is all made possible by the pass rush. Luke up front, Errol Thompson, number 40, recognizes that there's a running back that's actually trying to protect on the edge. 
he sees that no one's accounting for him in protection. He decides to fire. And he forces the early throw and the interception. Yeah, Abram deserves credit for making the pick, but that was made possible by the middle linebacker, Errol Thompson. Well, Tom, well, it's been a painful night for him. He's sort of staggered off the field after that hit and the interception. We'll see if Mississippi State can take advantage. Harris Williams around the left side, along the sideline, staying in bounds until he's inside the 10 and close to the five. It's first and goal. Harris Williams is getting out on the edge. A good job, too. By his wide receivers on the perimeter, Jesse Jackson actually on the edge, turning Ken Webster, the senior, in and, and not allowing Webster to contain. That might have been a generous spot for Mississippi State. It was going to be first and goal no matter what, but I, I thought maybe that foot went out of bounds a little prior to that, and they may be stopping play to take a look. Yeah, I believe they are. The previous play is on the further review. Well, we do have Rogers Redding with us here in the booth, national coordinator of football officials. Happy Thanksgiving, Rogers. It was a quiet Thank first you. half for you. Yep. The, there, were, there were not many penalties. Well officiated game so far here in the SEC. I, I yeah. thought maybe right inside the 10, that foot. Right about there, maybe right. Maybe. He's tight roping that sideline, and it's really hard to tell. Unless you get a look right down the sideline, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell. But I think the replay may need to let this stand just because unless they've got a look that we don't know. That one right there. Looks like he's out of bounds at that spot. But again, without coming right down the line, it's hard to tell, but I believe he's out of bounds right there. Which was what, what about the nine? Yeah. It's, yeah, right around the nine. Nine or eight. It's really close. It is. And as I say, you've got a you could be straight lined. It's just it's just hard to tell. But replay may have some other looks. And the mechanism for stopping play here, the replay officials looking at that upstairs, and if he is able, stop the play and say, I want to take a second look at it. Enough to the goal line like this, you know, first and goal from the nine or first and goal from the five can make a big difference in the drive. So that's why they want to take a look at it. And in the SEC, Rogers, a lot of conferences are doing this now, but it's not just the replay officials. The uh, conference uh, right. uh, tech center also gets involved. Right. The, what they call the collaborative replay, where the guys back at the video center in the Birmingham SEC offices are also looking at this, this, and they're in direct communication with the replay officials here at the booth. So it's a collaborative effort when they're trying to get this right. And usually, I mean, I think of the SEC as the league where this process is more streamlined than in any other. Usually, we get a pretty quick look, pretty quick ruling. That one was difficult. We it, saw that hard. a couple it, times. They may be trying to get a better look uh, just to make sure that they get this as, as near to right as they can. In order to overturn it, it has to be indisputable video evidence right. beyond all doubt. And, right. and, and there's legitimate doubt here to me. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I mean, it looks That's like right. he's out. I think he's out, yeah, but you, Rogers, you, is that enough? Yeah, you hear yourself talk like that. He looks like it is. I think he is, but that's just not enough to overturn it. It looks like they've come to a decision. He's writing down uh, the succeeding spot, looking at the clock, and a lot of things to, a lot of boxes to check here. Half the review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the nine yard line and not the six yard line. It will be first and goal. Mississippi State. And I, I, I did. I do want to repeat what one of the two of you just said. It it, it, it does make a difference. That's worth yeah. spending some time on. First and goal from the nine is a different scenario. Yeah. So they get. I think they got that right. That yeah. three yards back in the middle of the field, you wouldn't care. Yeah. But down here close to the goal line, it matters a lot. Every inch counts down here. I, I applaud them for taking a little extra time to look at it, especially like you said, Roger. This part of the field where the yards are critical. So it is first and goal. We'll see if it matters to the Bulldogs who are trying to take advantage of that turnover. Ole Miss showing some pressure and they crash up the middle. Williams gets driven back outside. Forward progress will be close to the original line of scrimmage, I think. Second and goal. It'll be interesting, too. You get first and goal at the six, you're thinking, okay, maybe throw it on first down or second down and, and run it on the other two. But here you, you have to almost be thinking pass. I mean, right there on first down, not getting much. 
depending on what kind of look you get in the secondary, this could be a situation where Fitzgerald drops back and throws it. And we've seen him do it effectively this part of the field in the first half. He will keep it. Fitzgerald toward the end zone and he got in. Touchdown Mississippi State. His big game continues. And he's been great tonight. And a lot of it has been with his legs. Here, opting on the zone read to pull it. And it's a race to the pylon between him and Kedron Smith. He wins that race with those long strides. What a response from Nick Fitzgerald after the disappointing end to his Egg Bowl a year ago. The all-time leading rusher for quarterbacks in the history of the SEC is Dick Fitzgerald and having an egg bowl that he will never forget here tonight in Oxford. All Bulldogs right now in the third quarter. It's 28 to 3. But it was a foot race and Nick Fitzgerald won. Yeah, he did. In open space, he's one of the best that's ever done it. As you can see, he pulls it on the crashing defensive end in the zone read concept, and it's a race to the pylon. He wins it and has done so, so many times over the course of his career. That's a pretty cool list, isn't it? Most career rushing yards by, the by a quarterback in the history of the SEC. Fitzgerald ahead of Tim Tebow and some other pretty big names in the history of this conference. And Nick Fitzgerald. What a game he's having. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. We've seen Ole Miss's quarterback Jordan Tamu injured throughout this game. The right hand still giving him problems. So back up Matt Corral going back in the game. And Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, just pulled him aside and said, hey, it's go time right now. Get ready to go. We told you about the intensity of Corral. He reminds people of Chad Kelly. I saw that on the sidelines that he, as he went up to the entire offensive line, was yelling at them, almost getting himself into the zone. You could see it. And a couple guys catching his passes on the sidelines as he warmed up saying man this ball is coming in hot so Greg something to watch for as he's targeting these receivers here Greg will be watching thank you Laura <laughs> no doubt and immediately a penalty did the clock run out oh I think they got a timeout to save the delay of game well there's a freshman mistake First right there and I wonder why they took so long on the sideline too I mean it was as if they weren't really aware of just how many seconds were remaining on the play clock probably just trying to make sure that that every single responsibility is accounted for yeah well that, that a little bit of a rub uh, corral we've seen him in the game yeah. already but a true freshman Laura is talking about his moxie his personality not that easy to come in as a right. young kid with a veteran team and a lot of star players on offense and be like that I would imagine yeah and be down 25 points yeah. I mean you're thrust into it a very difficult situation it's obvious passing situation too knowing that you're going to have to make up some yards and chunks so he's got to be very dialed in to what they're doing and naturally they're not going to take too many unnecessary chances I would imagine as he works his way into the floor of this ball game they will hand it off on first down and a nice run for a big gain outside the 40 Isaiah Woolard also a true freshman so those two have a chance to make a lot of plays together over the next few years here in Oxford and that's going to be an interesting three headed monster between Matt Corral Woolard and Elijah Moore who's really kind of blossomed into that go to guy in the slot for them over the last few weeks so bright future for a lot of young players that are out there on the field it's a good point they have some young talent on offense to go along with the established stars many of whom are playing their final games you figure here at Ole Miss that time the handoff and Willard lost a big chunk so Matt Corral the California kid you mentioned how he originally committed to Florida ultimately ended up here in Oxford Mississippi and I don't think inside the program when you talk about okay this is the final game for Ta'amu I don't think there's a lot of doubt that he is going to be the guy next year yeah I think it's pretty clear he's played pretty well when given opportunities this year as well and off and again Mississippi State's defense was ready for it You can start to hear more of that frustration from the Ole Miss fans. That's just tough when you're hamstrung against a defense like this and 
you're not able to really have any balance within the game. You can't run the ball. You're averaging less than two yards a carry. It puts so much pressure on the quarterback's shoulders. And when the quarterback's a true freshman at this point, it's really difficult to maintain consistency. You saw those numbers. Ole Miss has not been a good third down team all year. They haven't converted a single one of them in this game, and they dump it short for a gain of about a yard. Now, there is a penalty flag at the end of that play. Rivers kind of shaking his head as he gets up. That could be a break for Ole Miss. I would think that's going to be a face mask, something like that. Personal foul. Let hit defense number five. 15-yard penalty. First down. And it was personal foul, just was purely a late hit. Yeah, and you see Chauncey Rivers come down, and clearly Woolard's down. I mean, Chauncey Rivers is three steps away. He decides to go down and actually hit Woolard. He's actually fortunate that that wasn't a potential targeting, given the fact that that was a forcible blow as he extended that arm into the head or neck area of the of the defenseless player who was on the ground. Nobody on that sidelines all that happy, I don't think, with Chauncey on the Mississippi State side. That one might have been a backwards pass, but it was completed. And Elijah Moore, one of those true freshmen that Greg was just talking about, Took it upfield for a gain of maybe four on the first down play. And this is a good job too for Matt Luke to evaluate the competitive character of these young players. I mean, these are the guys that you're going to be laying the foundation with in the years to come. How hard will they continue to fight down many scores here in the Egg Bowl? I think that's what the Ole Miss fans are cranky about at the moment. Is and I, I, the point you were making is a good one in that. He got a true freshman quarterback without a lot of experience against a very talented defense, but it's 28 to 3. I think they want to see some bigger chunk type plays, some more chances taken by this offense. You got to work your quarterback into the plan, though. Yep. I mean, you don't want to just come out and just start throwing deep balls over and over and over again because that's laying your defense out to dry, too, if you go three and out too many times in a row. You tell that to all these people who are booing. <laughs> I'll tell them one by one. Third and six. Here comes some pressure picked up for the moment. Now Corral on the move, and he threw one high, almost intercepted. Cameron Dantzler was in the neighborhood. So now what do you do on fourth down? I think they're going to go for it. I mean, obviously, not a ton of time left in the game, but plenty to work your way back into it. But downs like this are becoming critical. They have to put the drive together at some point and get some points. and. And they're in decent enough field position to, to definitely consider going for it. I'm glad they are. Fourth and six. They do go for it. It's knocked away incomplete. Good play by C.J. Morgan, the safety, to get in there and knock it away. And that defense stands up again for the Bulldogs. Mississippi State with a big lead in the Egg Bowl. Minimums and fees. They draft pick and uh, is still playing in the NFL all these years later. One of the all time greats in the history of this program and it was 31 nothing that day in favor of Ole Miss. It's not quite that here today but Nick Fitzgerald and Mississippi State have totally taken control of this game. They get the ball back with seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Fitzgerald adds some more yards to that all time rushing record total. Tim Tebow even farther in the rearview mirror for Nick. <laughs> He's done a great job. Pretty amazing. He really has. I mean, going through a coaching transition at times this season, people were saying, you know, Keaton Thompson, backup quarterback, pretty good player. I want to give him a look. Well, he responded with a great performance against AM and has played much better down the stretch. Much better. It takes time, man, to get comfortable within an offense. Yep. That takes months and months and months. And he missed all spring because of the injury. So I think people jumped the gun a little early with him. Straight ahead run. It'll be third down. Let's go down to Laura. Nick Fitzgerald says that the coaching change and having Joe Moorhead come into the fold in Starkville really helped him develop as a quarterback. He says now he can almost immediately identify what a defense is doing, whereas that used to take him a little bit more time. He credits Moorhead with developing him in a way that he thinks will allow for some success if he's given a chance on the next level, guys. And I tell you what, look, you, you, 
you can say what you want about Fitzgerald and the throwing and you have to throw it a little more accurately than he has at the college level. Taysom Hill interesting package for the right team you find the right team. Maybe there's some plays where Fitzgerald can have some success at the next level. But I think Greg you think he has a chance perhaps to have an NFL future even if it's not solely as a quarterback. Yeah I wouldn't be shocked to see him switch positions. I, I know that it's not the easiest transition going from college quarterback to maybe a tight end but he has the build. I think he can gain some weight. He's proven to be a very effective player in the open field has a good understanding of the entire defense. I mean I wouldn't be shocked to see him maybe change positions to tight end to become a very successful NFL player. First down Fitzgerald's going to throw over the top and it is incomplete. Makes throws like that, he'll play quarterback. That, <laughs> that was, was a beautiful, beautiful throw pass. down the left hand side. This is an area where he can get better, it is on the touch passes. Hasn't always been there. He's more of a drive type of thrower. He's kind of layering the football. He, he really just doesn't layer. He throws line drives, and that's what he throws right there, showing a little touch. And it's going to be a huge point of emphasis for him as he tries to prove to the quarter to the scouts that, that he is a quarterback. And Keith Mixon had a chance to catch that ball couldn't do it Kylan Hill with the catch but he goes down for a loss of a yard. That clock continues to wind the clock is definitely the friend of Mississippi State at this point. No question. A little bit of that swagger that Laura was describing <laughs> a true freshman sort of stalking the sideline isn't he. Yeah, he's fired up now I mean. You never forget the first time you get to play in a rivalry game like that and this is obviously his first chance hoping to get another crack at it with them still somewhat within striking distance. How'd your first Iron Bowl go. I, I threw a touchdown actually. Yeah, believe it or not we we're, we're up twenty nine nothing and I tried to heave it. <laughs> Tommy Tuberville <laughs> still gives me a little bit of a hard time for pouring a little salt in the wound. We got to take advantage of it. See now that's a good broadcast partner. I didn't even know that story and I teed you up for that. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving Greg McElroy. Please fund me while here in the SEC 28 to 3 Thursday night college football presented by Dave and Busters Mississippi State with the lead under five minutes to go third quarter a third and long out of a timeout. Nick Fitzgerald back to pass with time and that's one of those passes sort of you were describing earlier a little too much on that one it's fourth down and yeah, just a little too much juice and when you have a throw like that look it's third and long you or no one don't make a catastrophic well I'm fine with that I, if I'm Nick Fitzgerald or run back to the side, no I was throwing that one away coach that was, yeah, that was, on <laughs> that was a throw away 100 yeah, <laughs> percent I think the body language gave him away but. for sure no, I think I think he has progressed really in the last four weeks since the Texas A&M game he's looked much more comfortable in the pocket throwing the football. Now the punt coming for the Bulldogs. The punt game has been less than spectacular fair catch inside the 20 Ole Miss running out of time running a true freshman back on the field when we come back to Oxford. Well the ESPN app now with ESPN plus get more ESPN and download now Dave Fleming Greg McElroy Laura Rutledge back here in Oxford Mississippi on this Thanksgiving night where all of us have so much to be thankful for right near the top of that list is our friend Scott Matthews who we are happy to say is feeling great back at home we miss Scott our regular producer on Thursday nights we appreciate Andy Reichwald being with us here on Thanksgiving night but uh, Scott is doing really well we talked to him last night and we can't wait to work a game with him again sooner rather than later so Scott happy Thanksgiving we miss you first down Ole Miss and the true freshman Matt Corral nowhere to throw the ball and it's a big part of the story of this game and you do wonder Greg don't you Jordan Ta'amu he has played most of this game but how much that early injury to his throwing hand affected him through the first half and early in this second half he's now watching for the bench a little shoulder fake and a good one and there's A.J. Brown A.J. Brown tackled across midfield nice delivery from the freshman yeah, really nice throw there and, and Tamu is him not being at 100 percent is certainly a problem but Corral right here showing some of that promise. 
that the people here in Oxford are hoping to see. As Ta'amu looking on, it's his senior night, his final college game. He's fired up to see his backup playing well. C.J. Morgan down on the field. With 3.48 to go in the third quarter. Part of the tradition of this rivalry game, the Egg Bowl, is a traditional run where the football makes its way from Starkville to Oxford in one direction or the other. The group of troops who were tasked with doing that this year for Mississippi State in particular got deployed to Kuwait. And so I thought this was very cool. I love it. They basically recreated that run to mirror the Egg Bowl run at Camp Bering in Kuwait just a couple weeks ago. Even with the helicopter, they did not actually, I don't want to spoil it, but they did not actually fly the football back from Kuwait to here. But I, I just thought it was a really cool gesture. And we're thinking about all those folks who are overseas on Thanksgiving. We appreciate their service. Yeah. I thought that was a job well done. I loved it. I loved it. And always just so incredibly thankful for our troops deployed overseas. Always thinking about you guys and praying about you guys. Corral with pressure coming steps up deep ball down the right sideline and it is an interception. Wow. What a pick by Maurice Smitherman. I didn't know who had the football. What an unbelievable job by Smitherman. I and mean, this was a well thrown football. It was well covered too. Watch Smitherman at the end when the fight is on for the football. Look at him pull it away from Lodge as he's going to the ground and secure it as he rolls into the end zone for the touchback. I don't know how they didn't call interference. <laughs> That's a but different still, point. But <laughs> still a great effort. I mean, if it's not called, it's still a tremendous effort by the defender to rip the ball away and, and secure the interception. I mean, really, only when Chris Rafer, number 24, put his hands up and celebrated was I sure that that actually was picked off. DeMarcus Lodge shaking his head. That's two in this game that I think he feels like he should have had. That was a pretty big time play by Smitherman. First down, Mississippi State, third turnover for Ole Miss. And a run play for a positive game. Nick Gibson, the third string running back, is in. And Corral's not real happy about it. I, I think it was a pretty good throw, wasn't it? That was a beautiful throw. I mean, that was give your receiver a chance on a deep ball and, and Lodge would probably love to have it back secured the catch but I think he's probably a little disappointed felt like there was some contact between him and Smitherman as he was going to the ground taking it five we're going to see this for the rest of the night for Mississippi State take their time absolutely fake pitch well defended. Uh, one thing about these numbers, whether it's the senior or the freshman, it's just tough against the Bulldogs defense. Yeah, and they're not the only ones. I mean, in the last few weeks, I mean, this Mississippi State defense has been off the charts. I mean, they have great personnel at all three levels. They, of course, have two guys that are hoping to get their name called in the first round along the line of scrimmage but Errol Thompson in the second level and the way that Jonathan Abrams come on in the third level man they're so well built and their defensive coordinator Bob Shoup has done a great job as well third and five for the Bulldogs Fitzgerald with some pressure delivers the ball and it's incomplete fourth down Well, you do all that said about this Bulldogs defense. Last year at the Egg Bowl, it was the second possession for Mississippi State. Fitzgerald got hurt, totally changed that game. This year, second possession for Ole Miss. Their quarterback got hurt. Different kind of injury, different scale, but Ole Miss just has not been the same since then. Maybe it wasn't going to matter, but I have a feeling that it mattered. They do force the punt. Fair catch. Ole Miss gets the ball back. Now you've, Greg, seen many of the top defenses in the country personally this year. How do you think the Bulldogs stack up? Well, I, they are so good at all three levels. They really are. I mean, they might not have the depth and then the all 22 talent that maybe a Clemson or an Alabama has. 
But I tell you what, as far as star power is concerned, you'd be hard pressed to find a better group. I mean, Jonathan Abram has a chance to legitimately go in the first round in April's draft. Jeffrey Simmons and Montez Sweat, they'll hear their name called more than likely in the first 32 picks. And don't forget about the sophomore, too, Errol Thompson, who has been so good over the course of the season. Corral shows a little speed, a little burst. He got away from Sweat, who's unhappy that he couldn't get the sack. <laughs> and why not get right into the middle of the Egg Bowl join in your first experience in the rivalry game? Yeah, I wouldn't make those pass rushers too mad, though. <laughs> that's, a, that's a dangerous recipe. But I like it. I, I like so far what I've seen from Matt Corral. I mean, thrust into a difficult spot. But, man, he's fiery. I, I like that fiery attitude at quarterback. Guys respond to that. You mentioned Alabama. And uh, that game, Mississippi State, hey, they gave Alabama its toughest test. Wouldn't you agree with that? No question. Alabama finished that game with 300 yards of offense against this defense. Alabama has been explosive. And Mississippi State held them with no help from their own offense. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, it's not all about players. I mean, it's a lot scheme, too. I mean, Bob Shoup this year in his first opportunity in Starkville has done a tremendous job making sure these guys are dialed in. And off. And Mississippi State ready for that one. It'll be second down. Final minute of this third quarter. It's a lot of talent for the Bulldogs on defense. And this was supposed to be their year, you know. I mean, everybody for the most part coming back on both sides of the football. And, and it hasn't been the most seamless season. Obviously, Dan Mullen leaving, going to Florida. Joe Moorhead stepping into a treasure trove, but it is a bit of a system philosophy that's changed. They've had some ups and downs, but they're being, playing their best football of late. Broken tackle for a first down Ole Miss. Isaiah Willard on what likely will be the final play of the third quarter. We'll see. Ole Miss maybe try to hustle up and get one more play off. Maybe. Maybe. And, well, they're going to let him run the play. Corral, A.J. Brown open. He found a pocket in that pass defense. Brown still going. Brown toward the end zone. Touchdown. At the end of that, Abram trying to rip the ball away. He could not. 41 yards. And the, the clock went to zero, and they let him. Uh, the ball maybe got snapped right at zero. Now here we go. We haven't had much of this. I give the players credit. Uh oh, AJ Brown. Now he threw a punch, and now Corral, the freshman, he's got his hand in the face mask. Helmet gets ripped off. So I was giving everybody credit for keeping their cool throughout this rivalry game. Now the cool is lost. Everybody charging out onto the field. And this could get ugly. I guess it's already gotten ugly. And Brown, who is from Starkville, and maybe no player more in the center of this rivalry than he. And Mississippi State, as they were started back toward their sideline. We're doing a little dance now. Their coaches are trying to get everybody pointed back in the other direction. We still have a quarter to go. Well, they held their emotions in check for 45 game time minutes, and eventually it was going to boil over, and here it was. Yeah, I wonder if A.J. Brown is going to be able to play anymore in this game. Yeah, he looked like he threw a punch. You can I see him at the top of your screen. Well, yeah, him and Abram exchanging punches. All of it on a play that I, I thought might not have even counted. I mean, the, 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 the clock went to zero, and I thought there was a little hesitation. And then after the play, there was a touchdown. Yikes, a couple of punches thrown. Corral got right in the middle of it. He got punched in the face. This one could take a few moments to sort out.
Well, it was a touchdown play for Ole Miss, so we're, it's going to be a while before we have the extra point. 41 yards to A.J. Brown. It was a great throw on a play that looked awfully similar to a play earlier that A.J. Brown caught in the open field. Uh, the, the, the other question to me was, I mean, that clock went to zero, I thought, pretty clearly. They let the play go. I don't know if there's a mechanism for the officials to do that or what. We do have Rodgers here. Rodgers, is that, is that within the realm of what's fair if the clock yeah, what, goes to zero, let it get it snapped? The, the, the official that's watching the clock looks at the clock, and then when it hits the zero, looks back at the ball, and if it's not snapped yet, he shuts it down. So there may be a... Portion of a second yeah. loss there, yeah, right. Okay, you've been in this position before. We'll wait to hear the message from our crew and our referee. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on all players from both teams. That will be their first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. But the flagrant personal foul, number two and number three of the defense, number two and number three are disqualified. Number 38 of the offense. Number 38 is disqualified. Those fouls are set. We will now do a try. Huh. So that. It, uh, let me get that correct. So we had two Ole Miss, two Mississippi State players who were disqualified. One Ole Miss player. I, those numbers, I, I'm not totally sure they well, got the numbers they, right. Maybe they, they did. Then they called unsportsmanlike conduct fouls on everybody on both teams. Everybody, everybody. Count as the first of the game, but Number the players six, disqualified. Already had one unsportsmanlike yeah. conduct foul in the game. This will be his second. Disqualified. And Willie Gay, number six, too, was disqualified because he had an unsportsmanlike earlier in the game when he threw the football. We saw a similar situation of that against Florida and Vanderbilt when there was a bench clearing situation. Right. And Voshan Joseph was ejected because he had a previous call of okay. unsportsmanlike so uh, just a lot of things to tackle there and when they all leave the bench staff. like that there's really nothing more you can do they, they got the two most flagrant ones but then you got to charge everybody because you just don't know who else is involved so that's really the way to do that cj moore the player for Ole miss one of those players peters for mississippi state it is and there's peters number two it is interesting we saw 38 for mississippi state abram throw i, I I, I, I described it as a punch. Certainly was close to it. A.J. Brown did the same. Those two were not ejected from the game with those flagrant personal fouls. It was 38 on the Ole Miss side, C.J. Moore, who was disqualified. Now, Rogers, is it possible to review this and find additional penalties in regards to punches or anything else? Yeah, they, they're, in fact, I think they're looking at it right now. They can look at that, and if they got the wrong numbers or if they possibly missed some flagrant personal foul. Uh, Wait, I don't could, want you to interrupt you but uh, we're also showing the play is the is the clock reviewable if they didn't get the ball snapped in time can they review that part of the play. Uh, they could but they're pro uh, probably unlikely to do this. It, it is reviewable but you'd have to be well into the okay. into the zero before you did that. OK. Well it's. I mean, it's good to get Roger. This has to be, in some ways, a nightmare for an officiating crew when it's when it's not just two players. Yeah. When it's so many guys, how do you keep everything straight? Right. It's really hard, and, and you, you've got to, you know, you, you what you got to do is try to get the players separate. You, know, you don't want to get between two guys that are fighting. I mean, it's stand back and take numbers, but at the same time, you try to get the ones that you that you can get, and at the same time, you got to try to get everybody uh, separated. And so, it really is a hard. It's it's an official nightmare to have to live through something like this. We did see we saw A.J. Brown. He was holding his breath when they were announcing which players were disqualified. And I believe he was thinking that he might have been one of them. Now that was the end of the play. And that, so that fight went on or pushing and shoving arguing whatever over on the other side. It, it was A.J. Brown and Jonathan Abram who ended up kind of going at it. And that initiated even more. So okay, so the scrum comes down the sideline, and then that—that's—I mean, that 
Abram and Brown, they at the review, the third quarter clock expired prior to the snap. Wow. There is no touchdown. Wow. This will be fourth quarter, first down, so Ole Miss they, from the 41. So they did review it. Yeah, so, so they did review it and okay. They did. They can we, do that. We, we might get more from Rodgers when we come back. Now you thought Ole Miss fans were unhappy before that? Wipe the touchdown off the board. Thank you. Trip to the Big 12 Championship on the happened on this Thanksgiving night, but in some ways it felt like it was inevitable for some tempers to flare and then some. This was at the end of the third quarter on a play ultimately where the touchdown was wiped out after review because they didn't get the ball snapped in time. Neither of those two guys have been kicked out of this game. Two of the big stars on this field in the Egg Bowl. 2018 we still have a quarter to go I mean it, it got heated and everybody was out on the field in case you missed it every single player was given an unsportsmanlike penalty after that and now on first down Corral running and will run out of bounds and Corral uh, he was now this is a guy playing his first egg bowl true freshman he was in the middle of all of it yeah he wasn't he wasn't afraid of anybody in there I mean he he was on the receiving end. Jamal Peters kind of grabbing him by the face mask and ripping his helmet off. But this young man is not going to back down from anything, clearly. Not a good look, though, by either of these two teams. You need to keep your emotions and poison check. Now a bad snap. Corral finds a way to fall on it. And here we go again. Another wrestling match with a kid who clearly has some. Uh, Yeah, that one was just high and hot. You look at Ole Miss, and they are working with Jordan Sims, their yep. backup center, in for the injured Sean Rawlings. The ball was coming back at about 106 miles an hour with some movement on it. Tough to handle. We saw that in the baseball playoffs. <laughs> no doubt. Corral, feisty kid. We just saw that. Now on third and long. And the touchdown got wiped out. He's going to go down again. Jeffrey Simmons in the backfield in a flash. One of the great players really in the history of this Mississippi State program. The production he's had along the defensive line. Jeffrey Simmons just dominates his guy one on one. They're just being better. I mean, just watch him swim right in, right around Jordan Sims, the center, who had a tough two play sequence. And he's no match for big number 94, who at 300 pounds is still so agile for a guy of that size. But think about the last few minutes. Ole Miss thought they finally had a touchdown. That ended up being wiped out after the replay. Four players were ejected after a play that ultimately didn't happen. Now we got a punt and a fair catch and still 13 plus minutes to go from Oxford in a 28 three ball game game for a long time after that but they played for that trophy for many many years the Egg Bowl in Oxford all Mississippi State 28 three they get the ball back and Nick Fitzgerald will run it for a big game still going to the 35 Fitzgerald all the way close to the 40 yard line. So another big play for the Mississippi State quarterback. Yeah and they haven't done much of this getting him out on the edge. Most of his work tonight has been done going between the tackles north and south. This time they stretch it to the field. And you see some of that speed on display for Nick Fitzgerald over 100 for the night over a thousand for the season with 12 touchdowns rushing to go along with his throwing touchdowns. It's just been a great career for a guy who coming out of high school is hardly recruited as a quarterback almost never threw in high school. Gonna go down as one of the all time greats on first down. It's such an interesting recruiting story. I mean he had two scholarship offers coming out of high school. One was Middle Tennessee. But that was after he got the scholarship offer from Mississippi State. Was his first offer. Mississippi State offered him. Said, I will take a chance on you. Perfect. The next thing you know, Middle Tennessee says, oh, hang on. What, what do they see? Well, we'll take you, too. Come on. Come be a Blue Raider. <laughs> it's worked out well for, for him, obviously, and, and has worked out outstandingly for Mississippi State. 
And I do think Dan Mullen gets some credit. Uh, people around Starkville maybe not want to give a lot of that credit these days, but for an eye for quarterback talent, he found Fitzgerald. Let's go down to Laura. Dave, we've also seen Fitzgerald's leadership on the sideline. While everything was being sorted out after the benches cleared, Fitzgerald had his offensive line's attention, telling them we have to put points on the board right now. According to Fitzgerald, one of the players he thinks is disqualified, number two, Jamal Peters, their starting corner. He said without him, Ole Miss could start to put some points on the board. We have to go out there and score right now. I love it. Yeah, that's that's a, a good approach. That's awesome. He's going to run the ball on third and short. And there's that power. He's just a big dude for a quarterback. He gets the first down. Yeah, he's just big and strong. And he almost never gets hit and doesn't carry momentum through the hit. Usually the defender is going to wind up on his back when Nick Fitzgerald's carrying the football. Most quarterbacks, it's the other way around. The defender is standing on top of the quarterback, taunting him usually after the hit, but not when Nick Fitzgerald's carrying the football. Can you just imagine what the lead into this game was like for him? I mean, it was hard for me yeah. to go back and watch that. That injury was brutal. Yeah, it was gruesome, man. He's battled back and is playing his best football here in November. Yeah, I'm sure he'd mostly forgotten about it, and now this week had to remember it all over again. Kylan Hill with blocking on the corner. First down and more. All right, look, we're, we're, we'll show it to you again from a distance. We're not going to show you the close-up. Okay, well, maybe a little bit more of a close-up, but we'll get through it quickly. It was not pretty. And Fitzgerald got applause from both sides. Mississippi State, though, he tried. They were never the same in no. that Egg Bowl. And they were big favorites last year. That was a game with a lot of meaning for Mississippi State. It was Ole Miss last year. This year it's been all Bulldogs. We'll be back after this. Giving every year my one of my earliest memories was Randy Moss torching us uh, as a Dallas <laughs> Cowboy fan. I think he had three for 180 and three touchdowns in that game. Dak today had two touchdowns throwing one rushing and led the Cowboys to a win. Fitzgerald over the middle knocked away incomplete. Second down. That was kind of a cool way to spend Thanksgiving when you were a kid. huh? Yeah, it was awesome. Absolutely. I remember some epic performances. Tony Romo during Romo mania when he came out I believe if I remember correctly he was playing against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and went off in the football game. He has definitely obviously did so many great things for the Cowboys for so many years now does a great job for CBS. Second down here for Mississippi State. Hill gets the carry. Short game. Not to switch gears, but we saw that little pop up with Notre Dame Saturday night at the Coliseum, and yeah. our graphic said win and in. Is that yeah. is that 100 percent? Are we locked into that now? Lock it in. Win and in. Absolutely. Okay. After the performance last week, a complete performance against a Syracuse team that had lost to Clemson by four and was legitimately two plays away from being undefeated. For them to go to Yankee Stadium, get dominated by Notre Dame like that, Notre Dame has done all they needed to and some in order to secure a spot in the playoff. That ball caught in traffic and then a missed tackle and a first down and more. What an effort there. That's Jesse Jackson, the senior, with a nice play. First down, Bulldogs. Yeah, really nice play. Trying to work a little screen and try to get this play in a little earlier. Jackson does a good job of securing what was another 106 mile an hour fastball. That was a little cutter actually as it moved a little bit from left to right and breaks a tackle and gets vertical. That's his eighth catch of the year. They should have thrown him the ball more. <laughs> He's going to go back and say, hey, that's why you feed me. I like it. First down, Bulldogs. If I told you before the year started, the whole key for Notre Dame is how they handle Syracuse. That proves they should be in. And there's Jesse Jackson. They spot him short, not a touchdown. He gets the ball two times in a row, just a tiny bit short. And just a little bit short. Let's see if he secures the catch on the in breaker. And you see that left elbow down. That's a good spot by the official. Really good spot. I think a really nice catch too. I mean laying out the ball remember can hit the ground but it doesn't look like it does. It was a heck of an effort on the full layout. 
Yeah, I think that's a catch to me. That's a catch. Tell that to the Ole Miss people after what happened at Vanderbilt with A.J. Brown at the end of that game. Harris Williams stopped short. Second and goal. Uh, how about this? A concerted effort by Joe Moorhead. The last four plays to try to get a senior in the end zone. All right, so yeah. you go to Jesse Jackson, barely used at wide receiver. You target him twice. You give the ball to Aris Williams, who's playing in his second to last game in a Bulldog uniform. Been such a good back for them over the last four years and try to get him in the end zone. I would imagine they're going to call a senior's number yet again to give them something special to remember here in their final final egg bowl. Second and goal. Williams gets it and the senior is in touchdown. He'll remember that one won't he? Absolutely. Harris Williams from West Point Mississippi. Hey, he's had a great Bulldogs career. A local kid West Point just outside of Starkville. And he's had a really good career. I know he hasn't been the featured back this year, but last year, of course, going over a thousand yards, he's been so steady. He's been a great teammate too over the last few years. It's a tribute to the talent of the sophomore Kylan Hill that he lost his job. He would be the starting tailback on most teams, I believe. Extra point up and good. So the senior gets a touchdown here in the Egg Bowl. And you gotta love it. Your final opportunity to play against your rivals, and you find Pater to extend the lead. Welcome back here to Oxford. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football presented by Dave and Busters as part of the Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. All Bulldogs in this rivalry game. Mississippi State looking every bit the part of a top 20 team. There was some question, I think, from some corners. Were they being given too much credit for beating up on some of the lesser lights on their schedule? Team with the four losses that high in the college football playoff rankings. And look, Ole Miss has not had a great year, but Mississippi State has looked very good tonight. Fair catch. Ole Miss, last year, everything went right, it seemed. And the Egg Bowl, including one of our favorite moments all year. <laughs> Braylon Speaks looking to the sideline and he waving and tonight. Reenact. Uh, I love it. He he got a lot of uh, he got a lot of kudos for that moment. That was he'll never forget that. We will never forget that. Well, that was fun, no doubt. Big smile. Talented guy back here at Oxford for this egg bowl game. Very talented. I mean, you could make a case that he was the best player on the field last year, and there were a lot of really good football players on both teams in the 2017 Egg Bowl. So Ole Miss gets the ball back down big, trying to look for something positive here to take from this game. This is their final game of the year. It was going to be win or lose. They will not play in a bowl game, so the offseason begins for Ole Miss as soon as the Egg Bowl's over. Yeah, and, and right now for Matt Luke, they need to get their numbers up to par right now they're way below from a scholarship standpoint they of course lost a number of scholarships as a result of the NCAA sanctions Corral throws that was a nice delivery for a positive game short of the first down but that's the first and most important part of getting Ole Miss back to where they were they have a good recruiting class put together at this point it's a really good year for Mississippi high school prospects they got to secure those prospects, bring in a big number so they can get closer to that 85 scholarship number. I'm not sure they're going to do it this year, but here in the next couple of years, they need to fortify their depth, start to find more and more talent on both sides of the line of scrimmage. It'll be a big class of, of high school kids, of transfers, maybe some junior college players. Mississippi State swarms Matt Corral. He goes down. We had a couple different people tell us that before the game of this is one of the best years for high school football in the state of Mississippi in a long time. And the follow up point to that was a lot of those kids still have not committed. And who knows maybe this game could sway a player or two. I, sometimes that maybe gets a little overrated. But if that's the case good news for the Bulldogs. No doubt. And, and honestly both these programs do a pretty good job of keeping guys at home. There is 
a, a real sense of pride playing for a state school. And Mississippi kids, yeah, they venture off. You lose a few here and there. But for the most part, it's going to be very important for not just Mississippi State, but Ole Miss as well, to try to lock down the borders and keep those guys at home. Big part of this rivalry game, that's for sure. Mississippi State with that one coming up when we're finished right here on ESPN. It'll stream live on the app. Final few minutes of this Egg Bowl 2018, Mississippi State. And they, they talked a lot coming into this game about revenge, about atoning for what happened last year. Fitzgerald personally, they have done it here in Oxford. Kylan Hill, the sophomore, did not want to just quietly go out of bounds. He was looking for some contact at the end of that play. Trying to keep it inbounds and keep that clock rolling. Be mindful of the sideline, yep. but still, we're still a little interested too. I mean, just to see a lot of guys on the field right now are playing their final game here in the state of Mississippi. There's no bowl game here, obviously, in the Magnolia State, so all these seniors getting a good long look. But imagine at some point in this drive, though, you give them a send off at some point. Pull your seniors, put your backups in, and allow those seniors to get a standing ovation as they send to the sideline. That could be. We'll see. That is Nick Gibson. He's a junior from Birmingham. Gets the carry, and everybody try to stay calm here in the final few minutes. I give the players credit after the ugliness at the end of the third quarter. It had a chance to get really ugly in the fourth quarter and everybody's calmed down. Good job. Over 300 rushing yards, almost 400 total yards. Ole Miss has not even reached 200 yards of offense in this Egg Bowl. So you will spend your Thanksgiving weekend in Tallahassee, Florida. Is that right? I'm ready. I'm ready. Another great in-state rivalry here in a couple days. It is. It was a similar dynamic in most years, Florida, Florida State, to this rivalry here in Mississippi. A lot of hostility there. Both teams with new coaches. One coach, obviously very familiar, probably watching right now. Still very proud of the players yep. that, that he left in Starkville as Dan Mullen. And he should be. Should be proud. I it can't. I know Florida was a special place for Dan. It could not have been an easy decision to leave knowing the group that he had coming back for this year poised to have a special year. Maybe it hasn't been special at the highest level but still another very good football year for Mississippi State. Fitzgerald I think he was looking to throw instead he goes down let's go down to Laura. Well, Dave, you're talking about Dan Mullen and just kind of thinking about the complexion of college football at last year's Egg Bowl. So last year this time, that's when Dan Mullen and his family were making those final decisions to go to Florida. And it just even added to the weirdness of last year's game. You think about everything that was swirling around with that even before the game and conversations with Mullen trying to figure out exactly yep. what was going on. It was a, a weird feel to the whole deal. I'm glad you brought that up, Laura. I'll ask Laura a follow follow up too. I, Greg do you think that impacted the way that game played out the Fitzgerald injury was the big headline but who knows Fitzgerald standing in there and that one on target and a catch for the first down. Yeah and I think that there is some of that when there's smoke there's fire and you as a player I mean you you try to stay in the facility as much as you possibly can you don't like to read the message boards you don't like to entertain some of the questions that are asked of you yeah. as you get out in the community but that can affect your focus level for sure and I would imagine that it probably did I mean Laura I remember you asking Dan directly about those rumors leading into that game yeah and he wouldn't answer any of my questions maybe it was a giveaway big hit there but Mixon hangs on <laughs> we should have known all right, the trophy is out. Ole Miss has had it for the full year after a terrific win. We asked Matt Luke, what's his favorite Egg Bowl memory in 42 years of being around this rivalry? And he immediately said, last year's game. <laughs> he said, that's part of the reason why I'm talking to you. He did say right that. Now. I mean, I think Which he's, is very true. I, I mean, he rallied right. the troops, man, at the end of the season last year and, and got kind of a marquee win for what was a very disappointing season. So the trophy is going to switch sides. By the way, Mississippi State 
still throwing the ball here under two minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Uh, it'd be some uh, moments of reflection I imagine for Matt and his staff after this game trying to figure out the next steps and a lot of it will be focused on the issue that you're talking about and, uh, above and beyond just recruiting and replenishing a depleted roster a lot of their stars are going to go on to the next level yeah. how do you fix the defense here yeah. in Oxford they got to fix the defense yeah they got to look in the mirror they have to look at the coordinator positions they have to look at every position coach evaluate whether or not those guys maximize the potential of their position group. I mean, just it's going to be a long off season of reflection, but given the recruiting class they have coming in, it, it could be an exciting off season too, nonetheless, for the Rebels. A lot of young guys will be playing next year for Ole Miss. No doubt. A.J. Brown almost certainly has played his final game here in Oxford. What a career he's had. And he's going to be so successful at the next level. Just such a great great football player so explosive with the ball in his hand and it's going to be fun to watch his career blossom they could not wait they could not wait for the final seconds to tick off the clock those guys uh, you saw McLaurin one of the seniors leading the way they wanted their hands on that golden egg and I don't blame them what a performance in his first egg bowl Joe Moorhead's Mississippi State Bulldogs dominated this one yeah, they did. And you see Joe Moorhead and Matt Luke ex exchange some pleasantries. As Joe Moorhead's got to look on proud. I mean, that was a remarkable performance from a team that has really played sound quality football over the last four weeks. So the Golden Egg is headed back to Starkville, Mississippi State, with a commanding performance here in Oxford. Great to have you with us, Greg, on this uh, Thanksgiving night. Good to be with you, buddy. Enjoy. I love you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Laura Rutledge, our great crew. Thanks to everyone for putting in the work on this holiday, being away from their families for all their great performance here tonight. Mississippi State, a dominant victory for all of us.